Welcome to the FAA Production Studios and the FAA Safety National Resource Center. My name is Walt Schemmel. I'm your host today. And our next presenter has been with the Bahamas Ministry of Tourism for over 22 years, and he's the Chief Aviation Specialist. He's a graduate of Texas Tech University, a licensed pilot, and has approximately 900 hours. He is a member of AOPA, National Business Association, Aviation Association, Florida Aviation and Trade Association, Florida Aero Club, and uh, Fort Lauderdale. He's a coordinator for the Bahamas Aviation Council and the Bahamas Monthly Fly-In, and that's a lot of fun. It's easy and it's fun to fly to the Bahamas. And our next presenter is going to tell us how to do it the easy way. And his topic is flying to the islands of the Bahamas. Let's welcome Greg Roll. Thanks, Rob. Thank you very much. Good morning, folks. Uh, I want to thank you for coming. Uh, I know it's kind of early in the morning. But uh, flying to the Bahamas is not a mystery. In fact, it's so easy. Um, it's, it, anyone could do it. In fact, we had a couple of pilots went down in a 152. This pilot came all the way from Texas, and he flew all the way to Treasure Key, and he wants to see the islands of the Bahamas. And I said, okay, you fought, we flew all the way from Texas, the drink's on me. He, him and his daughter, he said, Greg, I do not drink. I said, great, smart move. But today, I'm going to show you how easy it is for you to fly your aircraft to the islands of the Bahamas. And folks, fellow pilots, I want to thank you because this is very exciting because now with this economy as it is, the Bahamas is going to overload all the stops, making sure that you have opportunities to fly your aircraft to the Bahamas, receive all the benefits and the discounted rates for hotels. Uh, this is the time we need you more than ever. But the Islands of the Bahamas and the Bahamas government wants to welcome you to the Islands of the Bahamas. Now, the Islands of the Bahamas has 700 islands and keys and rocks and anything's running with water. This morning I'm going to show you, I'm going to tell you about a few things on how easy it is. And it's a very short flight from Bimini. It's only 46 nautical miles away. A lot of folks say that, Greg, you know what, how far is the Bahamas? A lot of people don't realize the Bahamas is only 46 nautical miles from the Florida coast. And that's doable by any aircraft. In fact, last week, we have the Ganad group of pilots. They came down and they went to Cat Island. They had about 15 planes. They absolutely enjoyed it. And then the other day, we had the air cam. The air cams, you know, the open uh, cockpit, uh, open pilots, you see. And they went down to the Bahamas, so it's doable for anyone. Grand Bahama, 60 nautical miles away. The scenery is beautiful. One you're going to realize once, once you leave the Florida coast, if you're if you, on a VFR flight plan, you'll find out that once you pass uh, the coast, you'll see the water start to be getting clearer and clearer and clearer. And then when you get to the Bahamas, it's absolutely clear. So the, beauty, the scenery is absolutely beautiful. We have multiple airports. So you have over 60 airports for you. And like John Bradford said, you're bound to find an island that you like. If you go to one island and it's not your cup of tea, try another. Of 60 of them, you'll find one you like. The good facilities, the general aviation, um, the Bahamas government is now want to make sure that when you guys come to the Bahamas, the same amenities that you have accustomed here in the United States, we try to put them in place. And as you guys continue to come to the Bahamas, making it more business opportunity for us, we will put those amenities in place for you. So there's good facilities uh, generation traffic. Customs, easy arrival and departure procedures. As we move forward, we realize that the custom officer, the immigration officer, anyone in frontline policy will have an opportunity to make sure that they understand why you, the private pilots, fly to the Bahamas. So it's, no, it's gone are the days, and thank God, for when you, you go to the Bahamas and you feel that someone's doing you a favor, or, you know. No, you're doing us a favor by coming because you could go anywhere else. And the government, we appreciate that. So now we're sensitizing our people this. So, so customs and procedures, they understand why you're here. And there are no landing fees at only government-owned airport. Fuel is similar to cost. Fuel is similar to those here in the United States. Well, let's look at some of the things that the government is investing for your pleasure while visiting the islands of the Bahamas. 
The first thing, you know, this, the most talk about issues that, that has come about for a very long time, the EAPIS program. And the EAPIS, you, you realize, that that's an electronic uh, program that U.S. Customs and Border Protection put in place for every aircraft crossing the border. And you must do it electronically. Now, what we have done in the Bahamas, the first of all, we've been proactive. So we're working with all the FBOs, all the major ones, and one of them in particular, Binion <coughs> Air Service and in Fort Lauderdale FXE. If you go to Binion, those customer service individuals will walk you through, this is before you leave the country, they will walk you through what is required by the EAPIS to make sure that you are, you, you are in, in protocol with the U.S. Customs and Procedures. And then you go to the Bahamas. And then once you get to the Bahamas, when it's time to get back, the Bahamas government is now also being proactive. And now we are putting kiosks at all ports of entry. And if you aren't aware or are still not familiar with how the procedure will, we'll have you Bahamas Customs. They will walk you through it. In fact, we are also working with the hoteliers. So while you're at the hotel, and you, and you, 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 know, you can't get a good night's sleep because you're still worrying about that EA pits and you don't want to get a fine, the hotel manager uh, will be able to walk you through the procedure uh, to make sure that this is, you are complying once you get back in the United States. So folks, we are, we are pulling out all the stops to make sure that you, you go to the Bahamas and you come back, all the procedures are in place. The RCOs, now what is an RCO? That's remote uh, communication outlets. And these are very critical because, you know, most pilots love the out islands. They want to go to the out islands. They don't visit really much of Nassau and Grand Bahama, which is nice, but they want to fly to some of the out islands. Now, the Bahamas has a chain of islands spread over 100,000 square miles. So what has happened is we, we have a problem with remote satellite, you know, communication. So now we put these different remotes in place so that you could transmit uh, and still receive, let's say, NASA approach, or, or, or you get NASA radio and so forth and so on. And these are strategically placed throughout the islands. Uh, a, a, a picture will come up in a few minutes. But those are the upgrades that we're doing just to make sure that you are safe and you'll be able to communicate effectively and feel comfortable flying through our country. Uh, we had a big talk about the 406 uh, ELT. Uh, IKO mandated that uh, most countries who come under, fall under ICAO, must, uh, all aircraft coming into those countries must upgrade to this $5,000 ELT, which, you, you know, you guys are not, in the United States, are not buying, to, you, know, you guys are not buying to that as now. So we at the Bahamas also being proactive. We know that most of our business come from the U.S. So why we, we need to penalize these pilots to get this information, to get this ELT right now, and, and you know, because we are an IKO subject. So the, the director of civil aviation has mandated that he put a wa waiver in place that you don't need to have that updated one. You can still come to the Bahamas, and we sanctioned this with the FAA, so so that you could come, you could come to the Bahamas with your, with your regular ELT. So that's something that we also putting in place. Again. All the infrastructure is in place. Uh, most we see FBOs open up all through the, the country, the islands of the Bahamas. Uh, one of the latest ones is in uh, Marshabo, Cherokee FBO. These individuals um, see the need. The pilots come and say, I would like to see an FBO in the islands. If you have it, and then you have all these citations, 172 to citation, they come. And they want to make sure that someone could adhere to their, their, their aircraft while they enjoy the amenities of the islands. So the infrastructure are now becoming in place. Again, I talk about the Bahamas program. And this Bahamas program is a program that the Bahamas government has put in place to make sure that every person, regardless of your immigration or you are just a, a janitor, that you are sensitized that any individual come, any visitor come to the country, you now could be able to, sp to tell them about your country and you understand why they're there. Because, you know, it, it is kind of disheartening for, you, you see someone along the road and you ask them about their country 
and they don't really know about it. So we, this is mandatory. We put this in, in high schools. They understand the, the dynamics about what the pilot is coming for. They understand why these um, historical sites are here, or where uh, you know the history of it. So you, you could get anyone along the street and ask them about our country, and we'd be more than happy and proud to share it with you. But this program is very critical because you know everyone who goes to a, a foreign nation. Sun, sand, and sea. You know, they are in the Caribbean, you have all the islands like Jamaica and Bermuda and all the other islands. All of them have sun, sand, and sea. What's distinguished the Bahamas differently is the people. Because if we uh, educate our people and say, anybody come to the Bahamas, this is how you treat them. This is what you do. So when we, go, we go through a series of things to make sure that everyone knows exactly why we're here. And then availability of phones. Prior to EA is coming online, U.S. Custom mandated that you must call U.S. Custom via landline, letting them know your ETA coming back into the country. Of course, you go to some of these out islands, there are no uh, um, cell phone uh, um, towers. So how do I make a phone call back to the United States? Well, the Bahamas government has put phones in place, and they call it the blue phones or Bahamas Customs. And at the back of the room, we have some pilot's guide. And these pilot guides have a whole listing of, of the, the US custom offices that you need to call before coming back into the state. Now, here's a trick, uh, that, that a cross check that we put in place in the event that the blue phones does not work. You go to my shop and you look on the wall and you pick up the phone and it's dead. So what do I do? What you do? You can go, out, go back outside the terminal, and customer would allow you, they would allow you to go back outside the terminal. You look at any pay phone in the area, in that vicinity, and you get your booklet, and you look for the office, let's say you go into the open locker. You look for customer in open locker, and there would be a 305 number. Will you start dialing a 305 number on that pay phone? Don't put no money in, don't put nothing in. Dial a 305 number, and voila, you will go through direct into US Custom. Now, if you want to call your aunt and say, I'm coming back, and say, OK, it's not going to work. So those, those, those numbers are programmed into those phones. And you could dial any one of those numbers, US Customs, and you will get uh, those procedures. You could also call um, flight following, I mean, I mean, get a fire or flight plan, or get weather. Those are uh, programmed into those phones. So those are the backup that we put in place. Because you know we've been getting a lot of um, Reports from pilots say, Greg, the phone doesn't work. Uh, it, it, worked, it worked this morning, and then when I came back, it was down, and so forth. But so those sort of things we put in place for you. Again, the islands of the Bahamas, so if you look at this island, you'll think this is this, this basically a, a picture of, of this a painting. But it's actually the parts of the islands, parts of the Bahamas. And you know, back in the 1800s, where, where things were, were this lovely, you didn't have a chance to even look at it. But now you can go to the Bahamas and actually see these beautiful islands and keys and chains. Look at the water. You think it's a pool, you know? We talk about RCOs. And these, these are some of the points where the RCOs are, are located throughout the islands of the Bahamas. And for those who, who want to go down south in the Bahamas, we have the remote outlet navigational um, diverse, diverse that you could actually hit a lot of those islands and still talk to NASA radio. In fact, um, if you're high enough, you could talk to Miami Center all the way. If you, I think it's about 6,000 feet, you could talk to Miami Center. And these, so these are important. And we put these in place basically because we want to make sure that you guys uh, um, feel comfortable navigating through our country. Let's talk about some general aviation. Now, in the Bahamas, there are two types of airport category. One is the government, government airport. And these airports are owned and operated by the Bahamas government, and all pilots are welcome. But also, we have the uh, private airport. And people say, private. Oh, why private? I can't go in there. Well, you can. The only thing is, they said, it's independently owned by investors, but most pilots are welcome. You go there, the only thing about the private airports you might have to pay a landing fee, you know, maybe an overnight fee, or something like that. 
Now we're going to talk through this segment about uh, airports of entry. Now what is an airport of entry? An airport of entry is an airport where they have Bahamas customs and immigration facilities. And this is where you will come in in the beginning of your flight. And when, when the times you depart the Bahamas, you, you need to depart from an airport of entry or an AOE. And this map represents <coughs> the various parts of where pilots come from. They come from all three. We, we, did, we did a survey uh, a couple of months ago, and we were trying to find out where, to, where our business come, came from. And we realized our business come from all over the United States, from, from California in the West to New York, uh, all over. The, the most critical part is navigating from, let's say from California to Fort Lauderdale. That's the most critical part of your trip. So if you're going to the Bahamas, once you get past to that point, almost 85% of your trip is complete. Because once you, once you start taking off from Fort Lauderdale or, or, or the Florida coast to the Bahamas, there, there's no navigational um, uh, interference and no class spaces that you, you must navigate around. Uh, and, and there's no terrain, you know. Uh, you can just fly on over to the Bahamas. Now, during the parting of the U.S., you need 12-inch numbers. And these numbers are mandated by U.S. Customs. Now, in the Bahamas, I told folks that um, you could come to the Bahamas, and the Bahamas government wants you to come. You may have small letters, but you could come on into the Bahamas with the small letters. But now when it's time to depart and go back to the United States, what do I do? Well, some folks tell me, say, Greg, what I did, I just put the duct tape on the number and then put the number of the duct tape on there because U.S. Customs want to make sure, see, you cross an ATIS, they want to make sure, see, that you, you have those numbers uh, large enough so that they, they could be visible at the, at the first flight. You, you do not need to depart from airport of entry. If you're departing from, let's say, Lakeland, and if Lakeland is not a, a port of entry, you could depart from Lakeland and go direct to um, Treasure Key or Marshall, or anywhere in the Bahamas, in fact. Now, what you need to do is basically file an international flight plan. And they say, Greg, what's the difference between an international flight plan and the flight plan um, that I filed right here? Well, one of, one, I think one of the most key points that you might see that they may ask you um, who's on board. Uh, the nationality. But other than that, the technical part of it is the same flight plan you fly if you're going into um, some restricted area in the States. Well, if you fly, if you're going to IFR, same flight plan. So that's, that's key because we try to keep all of our laws and regulation procedures uh, current to what you guys are used to right here in the United States. Uh, folks ask me if I'm taking a firearm. What do I do? Well, the firearms could, the Bahamas welcome firearms. The only catch to it, you, you, you need to, and I, just my own personal opinion, you, you, you'd want to stop the U.S. Custom, let him know that you're taking the firearm out of the country. So when they re-entry, you would have no problems explaining, you know, going through the red tape. But in the Bahamas, we, we will make sure that you have some place to lock it, and then the, they, they will have an, a, a current number of all the rounds of ammunition. And then once you're leaving the country, we'll make sure those ammunitions and those rounds are still in, in uh, the quarter you brought it in. U.S. Customs decal sticker may be purchased online, but this is a, also a requirement by U.S. Customs. And again, carry your pilot license, your medical, the aircraft registration, uh, all the stuff that you guys are used to carrying already. So these are some of the things that before you're departing to make sure you have a checklist in place. Now, who could say, tell me which island is this? Uh, th this, part, this is part of the Bahamas. Uh, anyone have a guess who could say which island is this? Huh? Grand Bahama is right. Uh, and you know, Grand Bahama is only 60 nautical miles away, like we mentioned earlier, from Palm Beach. And, and you know, if you want nightlife and you want entertainment, well, we have two options. We go to Nassau and Grand Bahama. And, and those ones are more or less like more um, I guess more upscale, like Atlantis in Nassau, Friday's Island, you could actually enjoy 
the all the amenities of, of uh, Las Vegas type review. And these are, these are key. Now, en route to the Bahamas, what do I need? Also, you, you will need a Coast Guard uh, approved life jacket for each person on board. Now, life vests are not required. But if you feel comfortable with a life vest, I say, I mean, a life raft, um, I request that you feel taken with you. Because some of you say, well, you know, it's not required, but I just feel comfortable with it in the plane. Well, of course, we want you to feel comfortable in the country. Then once leaving the U.S., you need to activate your flight plan. Open your flight plan. And you call Miami, Miami Radio, and any one of these numbers, 122.4, 126.7, and you activate your flight plan. That's basically open your flight plan. And then what you do, you just fly on over to, to the Bahamas. Prior to reaching your destination, you will want to close that flight plan. Now, if you're going into uh, Grand Bahama, you probably just call Grand Bahama and they'll close the flight plan for you. Now, if you're going into uh, other islands, remember we talked about those RCOs? Now you, yeah, now you are able to get NASA radio easily now, and you can close your flight plan. If you forget, you could just also go to one of those blue phones and close your flight plan. So we, we try to uh, make sure that we, we proceed to this operation. Now also, we have WX Brief in the Bahamas. So you could dial WX Brief in the, in the, anywhere in the Bahamas, a toll free number, and you could get a weather update right from FSS in the, here in the United States. Uh, that's one of the amenities that the flight service has put in place that to make sure that you feel comfortable uh, in a foreign country. And then one of the things we have the Bahamas customers put in place, you have three copies of the C7A form. Now what is the C7A form? The C7A form, is a, that's, that's the entry uh, general declaration that, that you, you, you fill up prior to clearing Bahamas custom. Now we can go online, bahamas.com bahamas forward slash flying, and they have the forms online that you could, you could download easily. And again, we have three copies of the C7A form. Some people ask for three, some people ask for four, but the, you know, you can just download them. Also, immigration require that you fill out the immigration card, and this is one per person. This, once you have done that, coming into this, this is Norma's key. And again, fellow pilots, you'll see that this, the country is open, and then some of these places are only navigational by private aircraft. So these islands are basically seen mostly by private pilots. Commercial traffic does not go into Walker's, mean go into Norma's Key. I mean, you don't have a, a, a scheduled carrier going into Norma's Key. You have to either charter a plane or, or be a private pilot flying, going, or a boat or something like that. But, but fellow pilots, the Bahamas is open for you. This is a copy of the C7A form, and, um, and at the back of the room, we have some booklets, and those booklets has the C7A form in it. Now, what you could do, you could also uh, down copy, photocopy it and fill it out, and then have it available prior to coming in, which make it easier, and maybe you just fill in some, put it on your computer, and then, you know, once, once you go online and you, you, you detach it, you could start pre-flight and some of the stuff and then have it saved so when you go to the Bahamas, you just put in the time and the way you go in different times, the names will be automatically in place. Again, you must fly, land at the first port, ports of entry. Secondly, you must close your flight plan. Again, present your identification, your pilot license, proof of citizenship, which is a passport, and um, two Bahamas Customs and Immigration officials and three copies of the C7A form and a copy of the uh, immigration card. And Bahamas Customs, they, have, they, they know the drill and they, they will be more cooperative to get you through Bahamas Customs. One of the things I told, this guy was saying that, Greg, you know, coming to the Bahamas, is, I mean, it's really gotten easy over the many years. And, uh, and one of the reasons why is because the pilots, you know, they, they Customs saw the need to get the pilots to the Bahamas as quickly as possible. So what you see is stamp, 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 and then you're on the beach 
drinking a Bahama Mama. That's what making AC is about. <laughs> so, so, so that's, that's what we're all about. And uh, so, now, this, this, and the reason why I'm, I'm showing a lot of these aerial shots, because this is, this is exactly what you see when you're flying your aircraft from there. This is Stanley Little Key. And you say, wow, look at those, look at those waters, look at those, you know. But this is, folks, this, this is what it's all about. You have an aircraft, you spend all that money to, to have your aircraft, and you put the fun back into flying. And you fly around and take it, you know, with the digital camera now, you, you don't have the, you know, before when this high tech uh, came, into, came into being, you, you had to take a picture and then send it off to get it, get it a uh, um, photo, you know, and so forth. And spend it. If you don't like it, say, man, I wasted this picture. But now it's a digital camera. If you don't, if you, you, you don't like it, you delete it right there. And then, you know, this guy came by the booth and said, you have 21,000 pictures. 21,000, you've been coming to Bahamas many, many, many years. He said, he try, every day he tried to take 100 pictures, you know? <laughs> and uh, so, so, so uh, you know, these are, these, are the, these are the memories, you know, that you could have in the Bahamas. And, and then what, what's so good about this, it's so close. I'll share a story. This guy came by the booth and said, I said Greg, I, I, I came, I did, your, I, did your survey, I did your seminar a couple of years ago. FA seminar, and I want to thank Obi and his team for having us done this. I did your seminar, and you made it look so simple and so easy. I said, I told my wife, we got to try it. And he said, we tried it. And we've been going back every year, ever since. It's easy as pie, you know? So folks, I want to, I want to make this pitch to you guys. Try it, and you'll probably be, you know, the same thing. And also, we're also Twittering as well. So you go uh, twitter.com forward slash Bahamas Flying. So talk to us, let us know what your concerns are, and I'm available 24 seven to answer your needs, your questions. Okay, okay, landing in the Bahamas. Now landing in the Bahamas is kind of a little, um, little different from landing, I mean the procedure is the same, but in the Bahamas we have a control airport, we have NASA on Grand Bahama Island, and 25 miles out or 20 miles out, you, you'll contact approach and ask for landing instruction. And they will give you, tell you what, tell you what to do, you know. But that's only Nassau and Grand Bahama Island. Now we talk about pilots going to the out islands. What about these out islands? These are uncontrolled airports. Now, I don't mean the uncontrolled, they're all over the place, they're spreading all over the place. They, no tower, I mean, no one there, in, I mean, there's no towers, no one there to even say what, what the winds are, uh, what direction, and so forth and so on. The thing it is with this, is a system that's been built up over the many years. Everyone is everybody keeper. So you're coming in, they say, within 20 miles or 25 miles or you will want to announce your aircraft, aircraft identification, your location and intention, and tell the pilots where you are. Uh, there's two part tango um, in road five miles, Marsh Harbor, nine miles, Marsh Harbor, runway nine. Any pilot in the area, please com you know, comply. Anyone in the vicinity will automatically say, Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm at the uh, threshold, I'm getting ready to take off. Uh, the winds are out of the west, uh, so forth and so on. They will speak to you. So, this is very important that you announce those key points, your aircraft, your identification, your location, and your intention. And what you do with the aircraft is, you know, pipe or whatever, identification, so, but with your intention, I'm landing uh, 09 Mar Shaba. I make sure I call, because, you know, because everyone will be on 122.8. I mean, all the islands are on 122.8. So you may be close to Treasure Key and you're still here and saying, I'm landing, you know, just say Mar Shaba. Now, one of the things we put uh, MSL is 1,000 feet, and all traffic is left-hand traffic. The pattern is left-hand traffic. Now, sometime in the Bahamas, you know, you think, uh, you don't see no one, and you, you know, the wind's favors from the west, and you want, you want to take off from the east. And uh, I said, you know what? I get a lot of power when I'm empty. I'm, I'm, I'm going to just lay the whip to it and get up in there and go. But you, you should follow the procedure because it may be a pilot 
on the short finals, you might, you may, you may, you may be because of the sunset or, or, or the sun, maybe you may can't see it, and then it may cause an accident. So let's, you know, you try to follow those uh, instructions because you go to the you go to the Bahamas, you go to some of those islands. It's so relaxed. You think you're in paradise. I say, ain't nobody around. I do what I want to do. You know. <laughs> Look at that. <coughs> this 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 is Sakata aircraft and TBM, and um, don't, you, you can't let these guys have all the fun. I'm gonna get a part of this too. Okay, let's talk about experimental aircraft. Now, experimental aircraft, EA has a lot of experimental aircraft, it's not fun, a lot of the, the aircraft here are experimental. Well, the Bahamas government has approved experimental to come into the Bahamas. It's no longer that you need to call Bahamas Customs or, or Bahamas Civil Aviation, said I need an approval to come into the country. No, experimental owners, you could come in just like a regular aircraft. We, we, we have shaved off that red tape and let's roll a couple of you guys as well. And these are some of the things, you know, the pilot license, the operating exam, you know, that's the normal things, especially with the certificate, they have all those things on board. These are mine and the medical certificate. And once you land, the whole country is open for you. And one of the things, uh, fellow pilots, I want to say here, yeah, because we talk about the Bahamas program, you will find that, that the, the, the Bahamian people are so hospitable, you know, you, you don't have to worry about harassment or people, you know, if you want to do whatever, people, you know, we are so accustomed to, to understand why you're here. You, you, you can enjoy your world and people be passing and they won't bother you at all. If you can create a problem, you, if, if, let's say if you, if you have a situation where you need help. You'll be the first, you'll be the, they will be the first to say, how can I help you? This guy came by the booth yesterday and he was telling me this story about, he, he was on a golf car and he was drunk as a skunk. And he, you know, and I used to, he was telling the story and he, he was on a golf car in Harbor Island and he was, he was you know, just, you know, and he was going on, he, he, was riding, he was riding on the wrong side of the road because then we drive on the left hand side in the Bahamas, you know? And he, he, he was, because you know, your instinct go back on the left hand side, but he's driving on the wrong side, and these 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 guys from the Bahamas were coming up on the left golf cart and so forth. And, and then all of a sudden, he he tried not to avoid hitting them. He ran into the ditch, to the ditch, right? And uh, and it's something that the, the, the what you call it the the golf cart turnover. So he said, you know, he's drunk. You know, he can't do nothing. So he get his, these guys came down and helped him up, you know, and and he said. Uh, he said, and, and they put him on a golf cart and take him to the hotel. So, so he said, he said, and the next morning, he really, you know, you know what they did? They pulled the golf cart out of there, and they realized that there's some dent, some marks, you know. And these he was dent, the defender was dent in, was in, and this guy took the golf cart home, and, and uh, what they did? They 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 take out the dent and do it up, you know, and then carry it by the hotel. So guys, the guy said, guys said uh, would y'all do all of that? He said, yeah, because we, we were scared that they were going to tell us that, that we run you off the road, you know. But, you know, that's the way, that's the way, that's the way Bahamians are. They are very hospitable, and they make you feel welcome. But let's move on. Now, we had a problem with Bahamas Customs charging overtime charges. You go to some islands, and they charge you overtime. Well, because we have, we have almost 23 ports of entry, and these islands are scattered out throughout. The Bahamas Customs, the head offices in Nassau, they will normally take the staff, officers from Nassau, and dispatch them to these various islands. Now what that create? That created these little, these little prime ministers of these little islands. So, so, they, so you know, these, if you go to these small islands, you know, the, the customer is almost like king up there, you know? So, so he felt that he is king, he's God, you know? And so, they do not apply, they do not appear, you know, adhere to the manual. The manual said that there is no overtime charges for private pilots for pleasure. So, the, but now if you come in for, if you uh, on charter, there is overtime charges for you. Uh, so, so a lot of them is gray area that they can't distinguish whether it's your charter or your, 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 your for pleasure. You've been having so much reports of it. Being proactive again, the controller custom write us a letter, a stern letter, stating that there's no overtime charges 
for private pilots for pleasure at any port of entry. Uh, we also have a copy of this, this letter inside the booklet in the back. So if you go to the Bahamas and they want to charge you over time, just open up your book to this letter from the, their boss, which is the Comptroller of Customs, regardless of where they're really from, he is the man in charge. He says no overtime charges, and you, you give him that information. Now, visiting the islands of the Bahamas, there's no landing fees for you. Single engine aircraft under 6,000 pound at any government owned airport. Now, again, we, we mentioned about the private airport. If you go to the private airport, there may be landing fees for you. And the landing fees may run from six to eight or 10 bucks. It's not that much. Again, we talked about overtime, ch overtime uh, charges. There are none for you. And even if you're multi, there's no overtime charges. And again, I say take that booklet because that booklet is very, um, has a lot of information in for you and it, you know, it could save a day, you know. There are no tie down fees at any government owned airport. Again, in the Bahamas, we, we don't have many tie down facilities in the Bahamas. Now, we, we are now embarking upon a program where we call the red carpet service that we're gonna be putting in place. And this is where we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna get the high school kids to, to put chalks, you know, to build some chalks. We're gonna chalk some all different islands. So these islands are gonna have the chalks where your abaco is gonna have a different color, Ab Andrew's gonna be a different color, Exuma, uh, abaco, Grand Bahama, and also Bimini gonna have different colors of chalks. These chalks will be located on the ramp. And fellow pilots, and within, within your rights, you could take those chalks up and take them back home with you. Because those are uh, what we, we want to we're gonna do. So we, we're going to be, in the next couple of months, we'll be rolling that program out. But the tight ends, uh, are no tight ends. Now, if you go to a private airport, there may be tight ends because they have a tight end facility. Now, if you go to Treasure Keys and some other islands, you, which is government owned, you may see someone with the ropes coming up and said, Excuse me, do you want to be one to plane tight end? Of course, he's doing, you are, he, 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 he's just trying to to do his own thing uh, to make sure, and he, he bring in his own ropes and so forth. So, so that's a special case. You say no, then it's, you know, it's no deal with that. Now, this is taken off out of Stanley Key. And again, the scenery is second to none. You know, these, these, you, you could take these pictures and have stories to tell where you've been and what you've seen and so forth. Visiting the island, the Palmas, your fuel. People ask about fuel. Again, fuel is no more than 20 minutes from uh, any major. If you, if you fly, fly, you fly with any one of the islands, uh, fuel is only 20 minutes away. I think there's nine fuel places in the Bahamas. Night flying is something that you know that we are working on previously, but night flying is only in Nassau and Grand Bahama Island. And night flying in the Bahamas, you have to be IFR. Now, you know, before I got my license, I was saying, why in the world you have to be IFR? <laughs> I got my license only 40, you know, 47 uh, hours, and I got to fly at night, you know, VFR. But, <clears throat> you know, it's only until I, I went with a friend to Nassau, and uh, he's IFR, and he, you know, after he get all over the water, and it's pitch dark, and you can't see nothing, uh, and he said, um, take the wheel. I could see no horizon, I couldn't see nothing. And then, then I realized why that was in place. So if you ever want to see why we have that in place, you know, just, just get west and head out west on the Tampa Bay, and, um, and you'll see, you know, just, you know, you'll see that no rise and you see why it's for safety we put in there. Maintenance and repair. Nassau and Freeport, and we have a couple of islands on Grand Bahama Island, and uh, Marsh Harbor uh, has maintenance facilities in place. But also Binion, Binion Air Service also have a Cherokee 6 that they, that they put in place that if anyone need assistance that, you know, and you feel comfortable with Binion Air Service, they, they will dispatch that Cherokee 6 to any location in the Bahamas to take care of your need if you require maintenance or repair while visiting. Runway lens. And you know, this information is important to know if you, if you fly in various different aircraft. And again, in the booklet, 
we have an airport page. An airport page tell you exactly the runway length and the all amenities are there. And also, the booklet in the back also tell you if it's government-owned aircraft or if it's private, and it tells you if it's a port of entry or not. So, like again, that, uh, that information is very critical for you. Weather, uh, information, WX brief, and then order local numbers. And again, we could use those blue phones to make sure that you have all that information at your fingertip. Now, as you already had a good time in the Bahamas and you enjoyed, um, you enjoy yourself immensely, uh, you want to get back. Uh, again, coming to the Bahamas is only one, one component of it. Getting back <coughs> is also critical because you need to get back home uh, to, to your destination. So what we do, we must depart from a port of entry, an airport of entry. We must file a flight plan. But you can file it with WX Brief or you could file it with NASA radio, uh, with the blue phone again, or you could just, in your hotel room, just dial WX brief, and it doesn't matter, you could just dial WX brief right there in, in, um, in Miami or, or uh, St. Pete's, and just file a flight plan away, Why, although you, you're in Marsh Harbor, still, you know, it's, it's, it's in one circuit. Uh, again, you must also call U.S. Customs uh, to advise them with the ETA. We have the blue phones available for you, and, to get your, that information. And then you must present the one copy of the general deck, uh, the immigration card, and also the flight plan. Now I must interject in here that the EAPIS, which is going to be on May 18, can be coming in place. So we will have that system in place. So, so this may um, if we go to 178, you know, 178 form, the U.S. Customs General Declaration form. That, that, that's going to go away, but, but the, but the EAPIS program, you will then now file the EAPIS program. And now you can do this ahead of time and get the headache or the, you know, or just, but we will have those, like I mentioned earlier, we will have those, those uh, procedures in place for you so that you, it will make this process going back to the, going back home easy as, easy as, as coming into the country. And then each part, each passenger under the, uh, over the age of six must pay a government departure tax and this is this is paid directly to the Bahamas government again this is Norma's key you, you look at the beach it's perfect and and uh, it's great and and then we have Hope Town these are some of the these are some of the some of the uh, some of the keys that you guys would love and that's why I, pilots go to some of these keys and they absolutely love it. That's why I put some of these pictures in it. But these are some of the decals that, that makes the Bahamas so uniquely different from most other uh, Caribbean destinations. Uh, again, uh, once you depart in the Bahamas, you must activate your flight plan. And this activation could be done with NASA radio. Now I know you may can't get uh, Miami radio at this point, but we have some remote um, uh, Miami Radio Outlet 126.7. Now, in the Marsh Harbor area, we, that's with those RCOs. One of those is Miami uh, Remote. Uh, so you 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 can in the Marsh Harbor area you can get 126.9 and still file um, Miami Radio. Again, if you if you want to, to say, I'm still uneasy of flying over the large body water by myself. What I need some help. You could also uh, get flight following. And NASA uh, approach uh, would be more than happy to oblige you with flight following. Again, uh, you can't let these guys have all the fun li leaving us out. And uh, entering the United States, when you're entering into the United States, one of the most critical things, and this is basically for VFR traffic only. If you fly an IFR, you don't need you do not need to get a transport no code. This is this is only a code for VFR traffic, and it'll be like one two some. You you will call Miami Radio and uh, ask Miami Radio for custom code, and this custom code just tells U.S. Custom that this this aircraft passing this, the ATIS is as being identified, and and they they will just, they'll just ask you a few questions, and they'll give you a, a VFR code one two and then some other letters. And that just makes sure that those F-16 and 
fighter jets will not be on, uh, around you, you know. But you know, one of the things too, you know, once once we realize what we have to do, and I and, and I tell and I told I told the U.S. Custom this week if we were talking trying to get the ADIS up and running. Once we tell a pilot what to do, they 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 are the persons who will, will do what what is necessary because that's what they do. They 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 pre-check, they they recheck and do whatever it takes to get you safely to and from. So let's tell them what we need to do, you know. And then once you're reaching the Fort Lauderdale or Florida area, you close the flight plan. And once the flight plan is closed, if you get to close it, you could do it on the ground or do it while you're taxiing to the U.S. custom facilities. And you could do it on your cell phone if, you, if you're there because it'll be active at that point in time, okay. And then when you land, you must land at a port of entry. Now the thing is with this, you need to, um, you can not overfly. Let's say if you, if, you if you live here in Tampa, which is also the port in area, you, you, you must land at the East Coast. Now you could ask for an overpass, but you know, if they don't grant you the overpass approval, you have to land at the East Coast and then take on over to the Baham, to, take on over to Tampa. And then once you get in there, you, you want to go ahead and um, walk into customs, have all your bags, take all your bags directly to customs and so forth, and prepare your C-178 form uh, in advance and then make sure you get them all the way. Now we're going to talk about the flying, but I, I'm, not, I'm not sure, we, we have a, uh, at this point I want to interject and we have a video. On this video um, we put some new graphics to our new DVD and this DVD is also in the back room and, and um, folks up there are going to be running this DVD in a few minutes. This DVD will give you, will tie in everything we, I just said. And, Hello. My and and this, this, this will give you a whole backdrop on, on how we can um, tie in all, all the, what I just said a while ago to make sure that you, and then you'll have some more graphics to see different parts of the Bahamas and so forth and so on. But also on that, we, you can see U.S. Customs and they're talking about getting back in the United States, which is very critical for us. And then I'll come back, come back to the Bahamas flying. So you could roll that video if you, we could. <laughs> All, all rules and regulations are similar to the FAA, but we subscribe to ICAO regulations. No, this, this, this is Anthony Davis. There are two this. airports in the Bahamas that has Control Tower, which is Freeport, yeah. and Nassau. Okay, it's uh, very simple flying into the Bahamas, like I said, because of the regulations are similar to the FAA. Most flying in the Bahamas to the other islands, other than Freeport and Nassau, that, cut that part. is from sunrise to sunset and VFR conditions. Uh, Those other airports are uncontrolled. Therefore, whenever you're approaching yeah, the okay. runway, so get them to cut that. you will. Because uh, what we're going to do, um, that we uh, have a little mix up with, with this, with, with, the, with the, um, that's a portion where we have civilization. On, it, on our DVD, we have different compartments. We, we, we have the pilot procedures, we have the hotel information, we have custom procedures, and we have spam civilization. But if you go to the pilot procedure program, They'll tell you exactly how to get into the Bahamas, and it is lovely, and it, you know. But let's talk about if they, could, if they get up and running, they could interject and get me in. But the Bahamas flying is also a critical part of this um, part of our program. Now, you sit through this DVD, you sit, you sit through this program, and you say, you know what? I want to go to the Bahamas, but I'm still not sure, Greg, about how to do it. Well, what we have in place, you have, you have a program. Okay, now at the bottom here, yeah. Now can I just press play right there and be all right? And this is part of our program uh, DVD. So, and you'll see, get up and run. But this gives you, this gives, this gives you a, a, a better appreciation for what we do. And if you, once you get, once they press play, then I'm, I'm, I'm going to shut up and I'll let you guys watch it because yes. this, this is, yes. yeah, yeah. Hopefully we get it, we get it up and running, but uh, and, and folks, I have some giveaways that I, I I don't I don't want you guys to leave because we have some giveaways because I have two pilots guide uh, which is fifty four okay. The islands of the Bahamas begin 55 miles off the Florida coast. 
and are made up of 700 islands, 30 of which are inhabited, covering a vast area of 100,000 square miles. Visiting the islands of the Bahamas. You must file a U.S. international flight plan before departing the U.S. And your first point of arrival in the Bahamas must be at an airport of entry. Each person aboard the aircraft must have a passport. Keep your aircraft registration available and check that your aircraft insurance policy extends to the Bahamas. Most do. All airplanes must have a Mode C transponder, 12-inch registration numbers on the plane, and one U.S. Coast Guard approved life jacket for each person. Life rafts are suggested, but not required. Vests and optional life raft equipment can be inexpensively rented at most FBOs in South Florida. At typical cruise altitudes, radio reception is fine. Speaking with a choice of Miami or Nassau radio. Both Bahamas Approach and Nassau Center have remotes throughout the islands. Customs is a no-brainer. You land, you fill out a C7A form. Once you get stamped, then you're free to island hop until you leave the country. Offshore weather is usually good VFR. Because of the Gulf Stream's moderating influence, the weather generally remains in the 70s and 80s year-round. For trouble-free navigation, GPS is your best bet, with VORs and ILS approaches in Freeport and Nassau. It can get a little breezy out here in the islands. From water to land, you have to consider wind shear. Upon arriving, you must land at an airport of entry the first time you enter the islands. Normal hours for customs are 9 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. Clearing customs is no problem. All you do is fill out the Bahamian immigration card, one per person, and four copies of the C7A form. With this single permit, you can island hop with ease. Hello, I'm John Obradovich, and my wife and I published the Bahamas and Caribbean Pilot's Guide. Well, first, let's just say that when you fly to the Bahamas, the hardest flying you'll do is when you go from wherever you live to Florida. That, that's a lot more difficult in terms of restricted airspace and terrain and weather. When you get to the Bahamas, there is no terrain. The highest point is 200 feet above sea level, and the weather is almost always ideal. So it's 44 miles from the shoreline to, to the first island, which is Bimini. And from Bimini on, there's virtually an island in sight all the time. Uh, there's large land masses as well as there's small islands, but you always seem to have land in sight and an island in sight. The Bahamian government has developed a private pilot's bill of rights. No overtime customs and immigration fees for private aircraft visiting for recreational purposes. And no tie-down fees at any government-owned airport. Avgas is currently available at nine airports in the islands. You are never more than 20 minutes flying time away from fuel. Avgas prices are similar to Florida's FBOs. When departing, surrender your copy of the immigration card and pay departure tax of $15 per person. You must file an international flight plan with 800 WX brief or Nassau radio in the air. Before takeoff, you are required to contact U.S. Customs at your airport of entry at least one hour before arrival, notifying them of your exact arrival time. A phone call is the only way to comply. Once in the year, you must contact Miami Radio 15 minutes before penetrating the ADIZ, just past Bimini. Hi, I'm David Grantham. I'm a pilot with the United States Customs and Border Protection. And in just a moment, I'm going to be telling you about some procedures that will make your arrival back in the U.S. go smoothly. As pilots, we all enjoy flying to new places, and certainly one of the most beautiful and exciting destinations are the islands of the Bahamas. But often, when we think about flying foreign, we might get a little apprehensive about clearing customs. Simply remember this. Prior to leaving the U.S., have your paperwork in order. And this will expedite your clearing procedure when you arrive in the islands of the Bahamas. And don't forget, at least one hour prior to leaving the islands, you need to call your U.S. airport of arrival and notify the customs official of your ETA. If you don't have good cell phone coverage in the islands, 
many of those islands actually have a free phone service that allow you to call back to the U.S. and make this notification. Remember, always fly safe and enjoy your trip to the Bahamas. The Electronic Advanced Passenger Information System, or EAPIS, allows you to enter flight data online. Starting on May 18, 2009, private aircraft arriving and departing the United States require pilots of these aircraft to transmit notices of Bahamas arrival and or departure information to U.S. Customs electronically, with a minimum of 60 minutes prior to departure through the EAPIS system. Bahamas Customs will make this process simple by providing computer kiosks at every Bahamas airport of entry, so pilots can file EAPIS information on location. Additional information on this program can be found at the Homeland Security website below. The Bahamas.com website has a very informative section under Activities Flying. There you'll find important phone numbers, tips, and questions answered. Another popular way to experience the islands, the Bahamas Tourist Office has incorporated fly-ins. The fly-ins provide for discounted hotel and sports activity rates. Uh, flying over water, I don't feel is any uh, more dangerous or troublesome than flying over the land. You got a plane, you got a playground over here. It's very easy. Feel free to call the Bahamas Tourist Office at 800-327 7678 anytime. So fly on over. And as they say, it's better in the Bahamas. Folks, um, everyone is so excited about flying to the Bahamas, they want to do it. Now, what I want to do now, I have some giveaways. I, I mean, I'm going to take these things back to the Bahamas. I don't even ask any question you may have at this time. Any question you may have, just, just go ahead. Well, um, okay, that's all I'm that. We got one back here. Yeah. Um, I just had a question about your slide presentation. Is, is there a possibility we could get a copy of that? It was really informative. Absolutely. I mean, one of the things we want to do, we want to make sure we get the word out. Uh, if you could just give me an email address and I can email it to you. And you know, by all means, see, you take a slide of your presentation, and you know, you're an expert, grab a couple of your friends, file a friends, and you'll be with the Greg Rule. And you know, that's what you see. What we want to do, get the word out to every private pilot going to the country. So, absolutely, anyone who wanted this PowerPoint, give me an email address and I will forward it to you. Okay, we have one right in front here. In fact, uh, uh, Walt, what I'm going to do, that was a very good, um, that was a very good question that, la that lady asked me. I want to give, I want to give one of these towels. Just for being so kind. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay, go ahead. Next question. Um, I heard a long time ago that you needed a uh, radio operator permit uh, no, to fly to the Bahamas. Is no, that still true? No, the radio uh, license, you don't need that now. No. See, what we try to do, we try to do it the same procedures that you guys used to here in the United States. Now, the radio license is on our books, technically. But the Bahamas, you know, in order to move out the books, you have to go through a law of parliament and, and, and you know, and then bureaucracy. We just flash it off. Uh, but if you look at our books still there, but we don't require radio license. Okay, any more questions? Okay, now, now let me ask a question. Let me, let me, this is a question. That, we're going to give away our next. In fact, we're going to give away this pilot, but this costs 56 bucks. Um, in the Bahamas, we have ILS approaches. Who can tell me which, on, which two islands we have the ILS approaches? Nassau and Freeport. Okay, Nassau and Freeport. <laughs> That's good. Okay, now I'm going to give you our next book. Now, in fact, let me give the tower for you. Now, the, um, in the Bahamas, we have two. Uh, we have one island. Two islands are very close to the U.S. N can you name the closest island and also the nautical miles from the Florida coast? Yeah. Okay. That's good. Now, folks, I mean, I'm just, I'm just going to give this away. I, I mean, I'm just. I'm just and um, now this one we're going to do. 
Now, a private pilot is going to fly to the Bahamas. What, what is the requirement? I mean, it's best that you can explain it.